um, John Snow from Union, will be talking about opportunities for print electronics through the eyes of CPG company. John. Good morning, and thank you very much for having me. Um, I'll start uh, with our, a little bit of our history um, with Lever Brothers. In 1885, uh, Sir William Lever um, started the business. Um, he's a social entrepreneur that, um, that thought, saw that if he could brand and bring a low-cost soap in, in England at the time, um, to fight off what was a problem, the dysentery and cholera, he could bring health to, uh, to the country and improve the lives of everyone in the country. Um, he did this um, by branding the soap, advertising the soap, and, and he created around that a common purpose for his business. It wasn't just about the soap. His common, this, this, what he brought to life really was about making cleanliness commonplace. And at that time in England, <coughs> washing and being clean wasn't necessarily a common thing. So it was very tough, but he was able to do that. The other key part of that story, and why I started with it, one, on the purpose, but two, is on advertising. When you bring something new into an environment, it's really critical that you educate or advertise and able to be able to communicate what this new thing, in this case, a simple thing like soap, could do for people in regards to health and hygiene. So the story really is about taking a lot of the work you're doing and giving a purpose, making cleanliness commonplace, instead of looking at it as a product, it really started to create the foundation of what you know we today. Cleanliness commonplace as far as soap, stretched into oral care, home care, laundry. So again, yeah, it's not just about a product, it was really about a, a purpose. And the second, about advertising and branding, really, really critical that you can get that message across so you can land your innovation and people actually know what to do with it when it comes into play. And I'll touch on this later on and link it directly to uh, printed electronics. So where are we today in Unilever? In 2009, we created our Unilever Sustainable Living Plan. Um, again, building off of the, the great work that Sir William Lever did. And then it was all about making sustainable living now commonplace. Um, I put that up there, um, not as a prompt for Unilever, but for those that uh, are doing business with us, hopefully you know about it, and those that are potentially looking to do business through your, through your product line, I really encourage you uh, to make note of the, the website, because uh, the more you can align to, to our uh, purpose and in, in where we're going, the more successful we can help you to be uh, in bringing your technology to life. I think that's really clear, uh, really key. Um, and even if you're not planning to do business with us, it's a globally recognized way forward. The Unilever Sustainable Living Plan is recognized um, throughout business, throughout governments, cross country. Um, and, and it's really been the core base of our whole innovation program, as well as just even the growing of our business with our brands. So I was asked to come today to speak uh, from a CPG perspective. Um, a little bit about the challenges and opportunities of uh, bringing your innovations, your, your great ideas to life that we've uh, encountered and learned from. We uh, engaged actually first with Ragu back in 2009 and into 2010 had a, a print electronics forum out at our innovation center in, in Connecticut. So we've been working in this space for quite some time. Um, and there's been some learnings and, and some things that I can share with that. I would do it through the four areas you see on the board, which is really about talking about Unilever Global, our, our scale and our reach, and how that can be a great opportunity uh, for the innovations and ideas you have, but also how that can be a massive challenge uh, as well. I'll talk about our global markets, our channels, our customers, our shoppers. Um, this is an area that I think is really under, undervalued. Uh, it's a great opportunity area where I think a lot of print electronics can make a, a start and, and a, a business opportunity and growth area. I'm going to quickly reference circular economy. Um, it's really inspire a new way of thinking about your products, not about what they are, but what they can be and what they can continue to be in life after life, with purpose after purpose. And then I'll talk really quickly about partnering and the, uh, uh, the value of partnering and being able to bring things to life in market quickly, because that's one thing 
we've really struggled with in this space, which is lots of great ideas, getting them into market ready, getting them into global scalability has been a massive challenge. I have to do this, I'm part of Unilever, so I have to give you the little, quick little blurb. Um, some of our global brands, the key for this one is really it's two billion times a day people touch our products and our packaging. So it's two billion times a day somewhere in the world is, is using our products. That's not the most about the product, but I just want you to keep that number in mind, the two billion a day. We, as you know, we are a global company in 53 plus turno, uh, billion in turnover as of 2015. Key message here is we're, we're sold in almost every country in the world. So the reach, um, and we're in more than half of the households in the world with our products and, and with our, our, our packaging. But why I bring that to attention of the two billion, if you think about the two billion uh, number and the half, half the households, it's, it's massive. And we look at products and we look at packaging as, as a one entity thing, and I'll go more into that on the circular economy page. But it can be so much more. Why does a package just have to distribute land and be disposed of or recycled? Our network of distribution touches all points of the world. It touches almost, you know, as I say, two billion people a day are touching it. Why can't we get more from our packaging? Why does it have to be called a package? Why can't it be called a product that actually delivers what we want it to deliver, you know, the laundry or the, the home care or the oral care, how can your printed electronics enhance that packaging to bring more value, bring a whole new market, or bring a whole new opportunity uh, to life? When we think of the packaging really as a global carpool for, for the innovations and the opportunities that you can bring to, to the table. So for the past 11 years, we've been focusing on uh, what we call customer packaging and innovating for retail. Um, we really, the team uh, looks at how can we improve the two-store and the in-store experience. Um, again, the goal there is to uh, better the experience, better the engagement, uh, and, and, and actually sell more product, grow the business. Um, I'm bringing this one up and I'm going to take you through, so the three uh, big channels for us, I'll take you through the drug, super and hyper, and then general trade. Um, just, it's a really good area that I think, if you look into it, um, it's a great place for you to start with, with a lot of your innovations and a lot of what you can bring to life. The quantity is not massive, and what we do in store costs a lot more than you know, the billions of duck soap or the billions of bottles of swab or the billions of sun soap that we move. So what we've got is a smaller environment, less quantity, and higher cost, and if you look at some of the display material, higher cost per unit to be able to bring your printed electronics to life. A lot of the stumbling blocks are people are looking at two billion, um, and they think getting out of the gate, you're gonna go from, you know, A to fast speed. What we find for the in-store is it gives you the opportunity to bring your innovations to life to test them, to, to make sure they work, um, to build the, uh, robust specifications around them, how you're going to verify quality. How are you going to do that at a cost? We know when you start, costs are, are far, far higher. We can't, on a primary pack, deal with even, uh, even a penny is a lot to deal with when you're selling billions. It, it adds up. In this case, when you're working with point-of-sale materials in store, it, you're talking anything that's 20 euros to 500 euros. So then the, therefore the cost of putting printed electronics in to prove its value, to prove its performance, is a lot more digestible. And it also gives you the opportunity to bring things to life and scale. These quantities are far less than you know, moving into what we call the primary pack or the primary space. And it gives you that ability to kind of walk, learn, we get an understanding of ROI and performance, and how we can work it and then build up to that scalable end goal of um, being on primary pack and tying into various things. In the uh, um, drug channel, you'll see um, this is actually North America on the left and, and South America on the right. Uh, very you know, different regions, but incredibly similar. Um, lots of opportunity in store, lighting, signage, navigation, bringing experience, bringing engagement incredibly, incredibly uh, untapped. And a lot of opportunity, I think, for the print electronics and also in tying in with the, the data uh, piece and, and how we can actually tap into this. It's, it's a, a huge opportunity area. Um, to continue that into super and hyper, 
this is, again, uh, two different countries. Um, I'll make everyone just uh, put up their hand if they think uh, Canada's on the top or Philippines. Anybody? Canada on the top? Picture? Or, or Canada on the bottom? Canada's actually on the top and uh, the Philippines are on the bottom. I wanted to show it again. Globally different, incredibly similar. So opportunities that we can develop, in this case this is North America, you can develop them here, are globally expandable. The other reason I wanted to bring up Super and Hyper, um, a huge opportunity here on printed electronics to play a role, and, and we're making advancements in this space a long way to go in regards to uh, performance measurement, traffic flow, the, the shopper flow in the store, um, how, to, how to enhance navigation, just like I mentioned in drug. How can we bring printed electronics to react with packaging to defeat the counterfeit? Massive, massive issue for us globally, um, both uh, in all regions, um, massively in, in Asia, um, and printed electronics can play a, a really big role there. I highlighted on the top the tablet. Um, we tend to use a lot of traditional electronics to bring the experience and engagement. Printed electronics can start to replace it. That, you know, a lot of misconception about super and hyper and drug. You see a lot of lights, you see a lot of uh, brightness and everything, and it's, it's, it's naturally assumed that um, you have access to electricity. Trust me, you don't. Um, it's very hard to come by, even in stores that you think it's readily, readily available. So great opportunities. Um, on, on even what Regu was saying in the, in the battery area, the printed battery area. How, how can printed electronics bring the same experience we were targeting with the tablet, um, but without the tablet, you know, with lower power requirements so that it can be portable and that we can operate it, you know, in these types of environments without, uh, without um, running into issues. In the case of that one, it literally required someone to go in every single day and, and change out the battery, which is uh, not a, not a financially viable uh, solution, no matter what the, uh, no matter what sales it drove. A quick snapshot here. This is of General Trade. Uh, for those not familiar, the king in General Trade is a printed sachet. Again, printed electronics, printed sachet. And I'll make that link back to um, um, the, the tie-in with, with your innovation areas. In, in general, this is our biggest customer by quantity. Where I set up drug and I set up on super and hyper, there's hundreds of thousands of those. Global, similar, global opportunity, great places to work. In general trade, these small mom and pops and kiosks, there's more than 20 million in Asia alone. There's 20 million of these customers. So again, with numbers, it's a massive, massive opportunity here. We're distributing our packaging, and we're bringing these sachets, we're bringing them in boxes. What else can we bring to these environments? What other advantages or what other experiences could you deliver to these customers, to this customer base, you know, via our packaging network? Light, very, in, in many of the cases, there's not even light associated with the kiosks um, and, other, and other types of um, opportunities within that. Talk quickly about a recent uh, example of printed electronics that we trialed um, in Europe. Um, it's actually a printed piece of point, uh, point of sale material went on a shelf edge, uh, shopper can touch, and then the sound with a uh, uh, chef would give you recipe ideas and tell you how to use the product. Incredibly successful, the actual printed electronic feature, um, no value in, in Cambridge, uh, in the UK, provided them, provided the electronics, um, and, and it worked wonderfully as a technology. Uh, lifted, its, lifted sales, and those that did engage, um, it was a good experience. This is a bit bigger than the actual unit, if you can imagine it's a small unit on the edge of a shelf. Back to the branding and the need to educate or the need to uh, inform. Um, no one really knew to push the button. You can call it out with your, you know, the little international finger on the piece. In, a, in an environment such as in-store, it's not going to jump out at you to do that. Um, it was a small trial, so we couldn't necessarily tie it to advertising and bring it to life. But it's a really key learning. Had it gotten more exposure, had the people in, in this case, it was in Super and Hyper, had they known they could engage, I know the numbers could have been higher, and it could have been far more successful. 
you have to look at that whenever we're doing anything, and if you're working with us on bringing something to life, we have to be very, very, very clear on what are those other impacting factors, because when we look at this, we're going to look at it and say, what was the return on the investment? What was the brand equity we created through your technology? But if it wasn't known and it didn't deliver that, it could be an excellent, fantastic idea, but the ROI just isn't there, and all of a sudden it falls off and falls down to the wayside. So it's really, really critical that we do bring things to life, but we bring them in a way that, that also brings the education to the user. Uh, I'll, quickly, I'll quickly speak to um, circular economy. I put the light on there as a, a, a reminder for ideas, uh, as well as um, just for me on the story. Um, for those that don't know circular economy, please, um, Ellen MacArthur Foundation, just to bring yourself up to speed. It, it's a really, uh, for us, it's the heart and soul of our program and what we're working um, from the innovating retail side. Our mission is to eliminate all single point of use uh, uh, point, of, point of sale uh, displays. There's no need for us to have one that goes in and then finds its way into recycle. Um, we believe we can also do that across the packaging. Uh, this linear way of thinking of create a product, you know, mine, harvest, do whatever, bring the product, put it in a package, distribute it, get it to the end user, dispose it, recycle it, and it's done, the linear model, it, it's, it's not a sustainable model. Um, we need to change how we think there. Um, it's damaging, as, we, as everyone knows, it's damaging uh, our resources and depleting them and causes so much collateral damage in the environments. Um, it's, just, it's just not the way forward. I put the light bulb um, in the Netherlands, uh, Philips Lighting, uh, doing some fantastic things, but one on the circular economy. The, uh, uh, one of, uh, an architect in the, in the Netherlands designed a building and approached Phillips and said, I don't want to buy lighting fixtures, I don't want to buy bulbs, I don't want to do anything, I want what I want in my building, and that's light. Phillips, you're the expert on making the products, you're the experts on the bulbs, you're the expert on this, I'm going to pay you per lux and not buy fixtures and lighting. If you can think about that and what that does to a design strategy, if you're Phillips, you're not designing a product now at, at that linear stage. You're not trying to, you know, more uses, so therefore less hours per bulb means I get you back into the store to buy the next bulb. You're gonna to try to make the ever-lasting bulb because you're getting paid by Lux. You're gonna make the uh, fixture uh, incredibly uh, robust, efficient, and the parts on it that aren't robust and efficient, you're gonna make it incredibly easy to be able to service that and change that because now you're being paid by Lux. You don't get paid when I replace the fixture or the light. And I really wanted to bring that to light. I think printed electronics, where you're going, the flexibles, the, all of the things on printed batteries, printed light, uh, photovoltaic, the harnessing of, of, of energy in store, that all are great opportunities that we can really drive a circular economy and I think uh, print electronics is really the core enabler for us to truly succeed in that space. So we're really keen on your ideas and innovations that can bring that uh, forward. Um, quickly on partnering, um, a quick quote from our CEO, uh, nowhere is there a need for greater agility and responsiveness, responsiveness clearer than in making our innovations bigger, bolder, reach further, faster. A lot of the engagements we've had, we've got great ideas, uh, incredibly intelligent and smart uh, solutions, but they, they tend to stay within a small little group. Um, there doesn't tend to be a lot of interconnectivity. Uh, there's never that natural tendency, you know, when you have a good idea, um, you want to keep it to be just yours. Um, and I'm not saying partner for partner's sake, but I think there's great opportunities in partnering where you can find some, especially in print electronics, if you're not working with printing experts, it's something to think about. How do you bring these things to scale? I talked about decreasing the scale in the customer area of things, but when it comes to primary, if you're going to do two billion, you, you know, even two billion in a year, you're talking eight million a day that you've got to be able to produce quality consistency. So make sure that you've got the right network of integrators, the cloud-based links if we're talking about linking the primary to shelf or to other performance things, that you've got all that together. Because for a company like us, we kind of had to 
reach out, work with somebody on this idea, and then reach oh, over here, we better meet with these guys because they're going to take this and do that, and then we've got to go over here, and oh yeah, they're going to bring it to life for us. So the more we can think about that and get those collaborations up front, I think the more successful your innovations and ultimately we as a CPG uh, will be. So wrapping up, uh, I'll leave you just with a, a couple things to think about. Um, you know, what if your innovation, your ideas, uh, service the global customer space, massive opportunity, totally untapped, I believe. Um, your innovation had, you could instantly access more than 50% of the household. It just travels on one of our, uh, you know, sunlight boxes, one of our belt boxes, one of our sachets that are touching out there, and your innovation is delivered value to 2 billion people every time and every day. It's really, really massive and, and a great opportunity. Um, for, for just to close, uh, if you have great ideas, uh, please reach out to, to myself, Christina Svetten, who's in the audience. Uh, I think we're on the attendee forum, but also a really great uh, connection with us for, for ideas in this space is through the Unilever Foundry. Uh, it's an easy site, it's an easy uh, thing to, to, to access. We post challenges throughout the year and you can put your, your, your creativity and your thoughts towards that and, and hopefully uh, open the door. Uh, by the way, the, the printing electronic when I showed uh, with the push button and the sound came through the foundry. So it's a really good door open as well. I thank you very much for your time.